The CDC has issued its new guidelines for schools to reopen. What are your thoughts on its recommendations and what are really the keys to reopening safely? Eva, the, the challenge here isn't to open schools. Any community can open schools. The challenge is to keep them open. And that's only going to happen if the rate of COVID comes down substantially in communities throughout, particularly the South and now West of the U.S. You can't keep a school open if cases are exploding in the community. It's just not going to be possible. In addition, there are a lot of things you need to do within the school to adapt. You need to keep vulnerable people out. You need to increase distance, reduce the number of spaces that get closed, cancel choir. So there are a lot of changes and adjustments that are needed to keep schools open. And that first thing of making sure that cases are coming down means we need much better eyes on the virus. We need to track a different set of numbers from what we're tracking now. Do you think these recommendations are enough? Well, I think the recommendations um, have important components in them. I'd like to see more balance, recognizing that not only are there huge benefits to opening schools, but there are risks. And we need to be honest with people about those risks. We need to move forward closely. Uh, we, we need to move forward carefully. And three things I would love to see every community monitor, not the number of cases, but the number of cases that were isolated within two days of getting sick, not the number of tests, the number of tests that come back within 24 hours, and not uh, the number of contacts, but the number of contacts who, when they get sick, are already quarantined. If we, know, if we measured meaningful numbers like that and held ourselves accountable for improving them, we could get our cases down so our kids would be more likely to be able to go to school safely and stay in school so it doesn't have to close back up, just as we've seen in the South. Open too soon, close. We don't want to happen, that to happen in the schools. A new study from the CDC and Vanderbilt University Medical Center finds many people who get infected with COVID-19 may have symptoms that last for weeks. What do we need to know about the lingering health effects of coronavirus and just how long they could actually last? The range of illness that this virus causes is astonishing. From absolutely no symptoms in maybe 30, 35, 40 percent of people to death in some and everything in between. And one thing we don't know is whether some people will develop some long term complications. If you've lost your sense of smell or taste, is that going to result in some long term impact? We don't know yet. We have to be humble about we, what we know and what we don't know about this virus. And for that reason, we have to share all information openly move forward carefully, and as we learn, we can fight the virus better. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Robin Roberts here. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Lots of great stuff here. So go on, click the subscribe button right over, right over here to get more of awesome videos and content from GMA every day, anytime. We thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the morning on GMA.